Hey guys, my name is Brett, and today I thought I'd do a quick video about how I personally take care of baby garter snakes. I recently had another litter of plains garter snakes, which are known as radix, and um, it just came to mind since I'm doing this every day now that maybe I'd share this with you and maybe you could benefit from it. So you'll find that my methodology is pretty simple. Uh, there, there may be better ways. I'm not an expert. I'm not a professional. I, I don't claim to be. I've just done this a few times now and I've figured out what works for me. Maybe it will work for you as well. So the first thing is I like to start off with a tub like this. This particular one is from Sterilite. And what I like about this particular uh, brand and model is that the lid has a, um, a seal, a gasket in it. I find that to be very important. These little tiny garter snakes are so small that without that gasket, they can actually squeeze in between the lid and the tub and actually get out. Uh, don't ask me how I know. So, so I really like these for babies. And then you'll also notice that the holes that I've put in it are very, very small. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, don't underestimate how small of a hole these little babies can go through. Um, Generally speaking, if I use these for larger snakes, I'll use a soldering iron tip to make the holes in the, in the tub, not with the baby tubs. The baby tubs, I drill these holes so that um, I can get the smallest possible hole. All right, now, what do I do? So I, I usually like to have two of these, one that the babies are in and one that I prepare to move them when I'm cleaning, okay? so. You don't have to have two tubs, I just find it's a lot easier and a lot faster because as you're getting one ready, uh, you can have the lid on the second one where uh, if you have, if you only have one of these tubs, you're gonna have to have some other place to put the babies while you're cleaning, okay? So one of the things I do that's different probably than most is I cover the bottom of the, of the tub with Aspen chips, okay, these are, finely cut aspen chips. You can get these at any pet store, um, reptile show, online. And I just put enough, there's probably a, an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, something like that, just enough to cover the bottom. That's it, no more than that. The aspen chips serve two purposes. One purpose is it gives them just a little bit of substrate to hide in, which, um, Snakes love in general, and baby snakes definitely feel more secure when they can hide. Second thing is, of course, it helps to soak up some of the mess, right? Baby snakes are messy, okay? So I put that down first, and that's, that's where it gets different. Some just use substrate, some just use paper towels. I use both. I actually put the paper towels over top of the Aspen chips. It's also kind of nice uh, if you get these, these paper towels that have the sections for these tubs three sections wide, fits just about perfect. So again, I've got aspen chips, very thin layer, then paper towels, it's that simple. From there, um, I'll tell you more about how I feed and water. So when they're newborns, I like to start them off with chopped night, night crawlers. I wanna get them transitioned to chopped pinkies uh, and chopped fish as soon as possible, but I usually start with, with night crawlers, excuse me, night crawlers, seems like most babies will eat those. This is the feeding dish I use. It doesn't really matter what brand you use, but I would recommend that it's shallow, right? So they, they can get in and out of it very easily, okay? Um, the current litter I have, there's 24 babies. I'll have maybe half of this bottom to three quarters of this bottom covered. Uh, it's usually about three large night crawlers chopped, okay? So I put that about in the middle. I don't remember who told me about this secret, but whoever it was, I think her name was Shannon on Facebook, told me about these scissors. These are life changing. <laughs> You'll see that these scissors have five blades. Couple tricks here. One trick is take the night crawler out and put it under running hot water. That paralyzes it and makes it immensely easier to cut it, okay? So put it under hot water, it will stop moving, once that's done, use scissors like this and just chop it into small pieces. You'll chop off about an inch or so at a time of the night crawler. They'll go into the dish and then uh, make sure you get, a, get scissors here. And I think these are for cutting parsley, by the way. So when you look it up online, um, might actually be under like parsley or, or herbs 
cutters or something like that. They come with this little little rake or little pick. It's perfect. It goes right in between the blades and it helps you push the little chopped pieces of nightcrawler that get stuck between the blades. This will get, get it out really easily. So that is a really, um, I'll say it's a, it's a game changer for me. <laughs> I used to stand there for 30 to 45 minutes chopping, chopping worms one little, one little piece at a time. So now this really, really sped that up. Now water. This might surprise you, but this is the water dish. It's the lid to a deli cup. Now you might ask, why do I use that? It's very simple. Believe it or not, garter snakes are great swimmers and they love water, but baby garter snakes have actually killed themselves, drowned themselves in water dishes. So I go with a super shallow water dish like this. And, you know, it's cheap, I have these around, they're easy to wash, throw them in the dishwasher, and that's how they get their water. So that's the food and water. Over time, again, I wanna move them from chopped pinky, I'm sorry, sorry, chopped night crawlers to chopped pinkies and fish. If you use fish, make sure you look that up online. Some fish aren't safe, like goldfish and rosies are not safe. You wanna use things like silver sides, uh, tilapia, things like that, okay? All right, a couple of other things. Um, handy, dry erase marker. Seems like a simple thing and it is, but what's nice is I, I write on the lids with the dry erase marker. I write things like the date that I last sped them once I get past the everyday cycle. Last date I cleaned it. You can actually visually inspect and know when you need to clean it again. But I, I like to write that stuff on there. I like write their birth date. If I have any that are struggling, I might make notes and write it on the lid. It's just really handy to have that, okay? Cleaning. All right, so garter babies are messy. So when I clean, it's very simple. These um, pieces of paper towel, they get changed every day, right? Sometimes multiple times per day. Um, so take those out, throw them away. The aspen, that might last two or three days. Depends on how much they're eating and how big they are. Of course, as they grow, they poop even more. <laughs> so you might have to change it more often. So what I do is take out the paper towels. I dump out the aspen chips into a larger bin that I, I take outside every once in a while. And then there's two products I use to clean. One product is just a, um, a, a mixture of distilled water and vinegar. I use that first. That cuts right through the ammonias and stuff that are that are in there, and also right through the poop. So first round, sp you know, spray that vinegar and water solution in there. Wipe it down. Get all the major mess out of there with that. And then I use this product. Um, there's lots of good products out there. This is the one I use. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's chlorhexidine or chlorhexidine. Uh, I get this off of Amazon, and I believe the seller's name is Carolina Customs or something like that. So that's the product I get. I use this to completely disinfect the tub after I clean it out with the vinegar. Okay, so you don't want to leave that vinegar residue in there. Um, use this afterwards, get it nice and squeaky clean. And that's worked really well for me. It's a relatively inexpensive cleaning product and it's working very well. Um, another trick, you will have a few babies that kind of fall behind. What I mean by that is you'll have babies that eat every time and grow very fast and you'll have some babies that don't eat very often and, and are the runts of the litter. It's normal, don't panic. I did, <laughs> try, try not to. Here's what I do. Okay. Again, there may be better ways, guys. This is just this is the way that I've handled it. What I get is one of these. Okay, so this is a nice little bin. I I, I don't remember who makes it, but um, they're pretty easy to find. A couple things I do to modify. See this blue tape on here. First of all, this is painter's tape, one inch painter's tape. Why painter's tape? Baby snakes will stick to tape. Do not use masking tape duct tape, Gorilla tape, do not ever use those products around snakes in general, especially baby snakes, okay? But um, the way that this thing is designed, there's a hole, I'm not even sure what it's for, here, that's big enough for a baby garter snake to get through. Don't ask me how I know. And also the, the slots along this edge and the slots along here, they're questionable. I'm not sure if a baby garter can get through them or not, but I cover them up just to be safe. What, what you're left with is a screen top. In my eyes, this is now baby safe. Uh, you can make your own decisions, but that's how I prepare this. What's cool about this though, going back to the, the snakes that are a little slower to, to grow and eat, what I like to do is in every litter so far that I've had, there might be 
two to five babies that fall behind. I like to separate them. Put them in a smaller tub like this or bin like this. Put the food at one end and they don't have nearly as far to go to find it and they don't have to compete with as many other baby snakes. The main thing that, that I've found with runts is they're just shy. And because they're shy, they, they're they afraid to go eat while, while the big boys are eating, so to speak, while the aggressive eaters are there. And they don't venture very far. So they, they often hide and stay in, a, in an area for a while. So in a big tub like this to a snake that's that long, this could be a little intimidating. So again, separate those that fall behind. The smaller bin really helps. And it also helps you monitor their progress a lot better because they're not in with the other maniacs that are, that are going crazy. Okay. So those are some of the things that I do. Guys, again, I'm not an expert. I'll say that one more time. It's just the way that I do it. It's worked well for me. I hope it works for you. Uh, hopefully I don't get too many hecklers telling me I'm doing it all wrong, but do feel free to uh, leave your comments and let me know what you think. Okay. I'll do some more videos.